Thank you. Yes, we are joined by Senator Ron Johnson. Thank you for joining us. We know you don't have a lot of time. You've got to get back in there to listen to uh, Theresa May. What are you hoping to hear, Senator, from Theresa May? I'm hoping the Prime Minister will reaffirm our special relationship, uh, a dedication to uh, really negotiating our first bi bilateral trade agreement. Uh, I'm for free and free and, and fair trade, as I believe this president is. So again, it's it's a very special relationship between uh, uh, Britain and, and the U.S., and I want to make sure that's just reaffirmed. What are some of the sticking points between the U.S. and the U.K. on this trade agreement, and do you think that the U.S. has any bit of leverage uh, as a result of, of this fast Brexit vote? Well, you know, obviously, uh, Britain is going to have to start renegotiating the, their relationships with uh, all, all the European countries. Um, I think the greatest leverage we have is we have a president now that knows how to negotiate a good deal. And he's not backing down from that. He's going to insist on, on fair trade, as is his Commerce Secretary and, and his trade negotiator. And that, that's not a bad thing. I, I'm, I'm for free trade. But let's face it, I think America has repeatedly been taking advantage of some of these deals. And so I think on a country-by-country -country basis, and I think that's the really what President Trump is talking about, is if you negotiate these deals country-by-country, country, you can ensure that they are fair in, in the best right. interest of both countries. Let's talk about another trade deal that is... Uh, garnering a lot of headlines, and that, of course, is with the U.S. and Mexico. Uh, news reports out this afternoon that uh, Mexico President Peña Nieto is withdrawing uh, from attending a meeting. President Trump said he has also canceled it. it are you concerned at all about, about the negotiation tactics of President Trump with regards to this meeting? Well, again, I think he's starting that negotiation from, from a position of strength. Uh, we do need greater cooperation. Is it a position of strength, though, if, if, if Mexican president is canceling? Well, again, the We've got a long time to go through this process. Um, it's incredibly important for our, our national security, our border security, our homeland security, that uh, we have a good partnership with, with Mexico, that they actually step up the plate, uh, start securing their southern border. Uh, we do need cooperation. Uh, and we'll, you know, this is just the opening bid, I would say. You know, is this really just about NAFTA? I mean, is that what we're really seeing here, is the beginning of a renegotiation of NAFTA, this back and forth? I, I, think, I think it's both NAFTA. To, but I think it's also the, the, the security of our southwest border, which is totally unsecure. I'm chairman of the Homeland Security yeah. Government Affairs Committee. We have a completely porous border, and that endangers America from a number of us from another front. For example, we have secure borders so we can fix the illegal immigration problem, public health and safety, as well as the threat of Islamic terror. So how, we, we have to secure the border. How much is the wall going to cost? Well, I was just over in Israel, and yeah. I saw the uh, the fence they constructed in two years, about 150 miles. They paid about $2.9 million for a really good fence, one that really works. We're hearing $8 billion to $20 billion. Well, I mean. again, we, we may produce different types of walls, but Let's face it, we have a president who is expert at building things and negotiating pretty good contracts. So my guess is we'll probably build it uh, more cost effectively than we would have under the previous administration. Does it matter if at the end of the day Mexico does not end up paying for the wall? As a well, Republican, does that matter? The, the, we have to secure the border. And I think there's a number of ways we can, in effect, have Mexico pay for the wall. And uh, we'll leave that to the appropriators and, and, and this Trump administration in terms of negotiating the, the final deal. But is it so it seems like what you're saying is it's most important. To build the wall. And then we, have, we have to secure a border. We okay. have to secure a border. Okay. Quickly, there's a report out. Uh, there's been a back and forth. The Trump administration is saying at the State Department that they asked top officials to leave the State Department. And there are other reports out suggesting that there was some sort of mass exodus from the State Department. Do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, and, and are you concerned at all about what's going on? Well, in one, one of the questions I asked uh, you know, the, the nominee, Rex yeah. Tillerson, during his confirmation hearings is, how are you going to manage a State Department who's, you know, in many respects is, is are hostile to your views? Now, I think that's basically fact of the matter. You have to have the pure permanent bureaucracy in many of these agencies, including the State Department, that are not particularly conservative. And so how do you manage that process? Uh, one of the ways you manage it is replace people. Uh, so so you're, you're not concerned at all, again, then, I guess, about the leadership? Or... I, I've, got a, I've got a great deal of respect for the professional foreign service people. They're, they're, People that entered this field because they're interested in it, they want to do the work, 
I, my experience you know, when I do, do uh, uh, visits to foreign countries, the, the foreign service personnel are first class individuals. Uh, but no, when you were talking about the hierarchy within the State Department, I, I think we should have people that actually support this administration's viewpoint. Final question for you, because I know you have to get back in there, but there's been talk on the House that uh, one of the first year items will be deregulatory policies for Dodd-Frank and, and, and putting that on the first year. In the Senate, of course, the calendar is a little bit more full. How much of a priority is is taking a look again at Dodd-Frank? Well, first of all, to me, the top priority is getting our economy growing again. The number one impediment to economic growth is the overregulation, whether it's in our financial sector or in you know, energy sector, uh, environment. We have a massive amount of regulation, about $14,800 per household per year. That's one of the reasons wage, wages have stagnated. It's one of the reasons our economy is not realizing its full potential. What timeline do you expect it's, that this it's, year? It's a top priority. We're going to use uh, executive orders. We're going to use Congressional Review Act, and we'll try and uh, override bad regulation with better regulation. Senator Ron Johnson, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on Bloomberg. Enjoy and your day. Enjoy uh, Theresa May. All I right. will. Back to you.